It's the magic of math here, and today we're going to be talking functions. We'll be given a table, we'll find the y-intercept, we're going to find the slope, we're going to find the equation, and then we're going to determine whether or not a solution is part of this function. Here we go. We are told that this question has four parts, and we have a student who created this table to represent a linear relationship between x and y. Here's our table. Here's part A. What is the y-intercept of the line represented by the x and y values shown in the table? We're asked to show or explain how we get our answer. Here's where you pause the video, do part A, and then come back to see my work. Good luck. Welcome back. Part A has us identifying the y-intercept of the line represented by this relationship between x and y. Understanding that the y-intercept is the ordered pair 0b, where the x-coordinate of the y-intercept will always be 0. So anytime our x-coordinate of an ordered pair is 0, the y-coordinate is b, or our y-intercept. So we look at our table, and here is where x is equal to 0, our output y is 5, so that tells us that b, our y-intercept, is 5. If we plotted this point on a coordinate grid, we go from 0 up 5 on the y-axis. So 0, 5 is a point on the y-axis, and we graph the line, the line will pass through 0, 5. So it crosses or intersects the y-axis at 5. So therefore, we can say that the y-intercept of the line is 5 or 0, 5, the ordered pair. Since the x value is 0, this is the point where the line will intersect the y-axis. So this is our explanation of identifying our y-intercept of 5. Let's move on to part b. What is the slope of the line represented by the x and y value shown in the table? And we're, again, we need to show or explain how we get our answer. So please pause, you solve part b, and then come back to see my solution. Welcome back. Here we're finding the slope of the line represented by this table. I'm going to show you how to do this in two different ways. The first way is to understand that m, the variable m, represents slope of a line. We're going to find it by finding the change in y and divide by the change in x. So what I mean by that is when we look at our table of values, we're looking to find the slope. We're going to look over here and say what is the change in y between all of these points. The first one I want to look at is the easiest. What is the difference. What's the change when I go from 2.5 to 0? So when I do this, I'm going down 2.5. 2.5 subtract 2.5 is 0. If I look from 5 to 2.5, again I've subtracted 2.5. It's going down. 7.5 to 5, it went down 2.5. 10 to 7.5, it went down. So it's a constant amount of change in our y's. It's decreasing by 2 and a half. So let's write two, negative 2.5 here. And then we're going to look at our x values. So again, we want to look at the change between all the different x values. So I'm going to again look down here. For it to go from 1 to 2, we're increasing by 1. To go from 0 to 1, I increased by 1. Negative 1 to 0, I increased by 1. Negative 2 plus 1, negative 1. So my constant rate of change in my x values is positive 1. So now we're going to do this math because this is a complex fraction. Negative 2.5 divided by 1 gives us a slope of negative 2.5. Another way to find slope is if you use the slope formula. Slope is equal to the change in y or the difference between two y-coordinates divided by the difference of the x-coordinates. So when we look at y2, x2, this is a specific point on it from the table. And then this is a specific point from the table. So think of it as point 0.1 subtracted from point 0.2. 
So we're going to go ahead and we're going to use this to be our y values and then 1 and 2 to be our x values. So we're going to start off our y2, here's our second point, is 2.5, subtract y1, 0, and then we're going to subtract, if this was y2, this is x2. So 1, subtract 2. So the difference between these, so 2.5 subtract 0 is 2.5. 1 subtract 2 is negative 1. When we divide, we get that the slope is negative 2.5. So two different ways to find the value of slope. So here we have the slope of the line is negative 2.5. Moving on to part C, we're asked to write an equation of the line represented by the relationship between x and y shown in the table, same table as part A and part B. Please pause, write the equation of the line, and then come back and hit play to see mine. Welcome back. Here we're writing the equation of a line. So the equation of a line is written in the form y equals mx plus b. We call this slope intercept form, where m and b are the slope and y intercept. So b, our y intercept, will bring that forward from part a. We determined in part a that b, the y intercept, was 5. And m, our slope, we determined in part b that the slope was negative 2.5. So let's plug in. We're going to replace m with negative 2.5 and b with positive 5. So bring down our y. Our m is negative 2.5 times our x. And then add our 5, our y-intercept. And there we have the equation of the line is y equals negative 2.5x plus 5. In our last part, part D. The student says the point 9, negative 17.5 lies on the line represented by the relationship between x and y shown in the table. Is the student correct? And show or explain how you got your answer. So go ahead and pause one more time, determine whether or not the student is correct, and then come back to see my work. Welcome back. Again, we're trying to determine if the student is correct. Does this point lie on the line? So let's bring forth our part C, our equation of our line, and we're going to understand that we have an input x and an output y. So this point needs to be a solution to this equation. It needs to make this equation true if it's on the line. So 9 is going to go in for x, and at y value, our y coordinate, negative 17.5, is going to go in for y in our equation. So let's rewrite the equation. y is replaced with the y coordinate of our solution, or our point, negative 2.5, multiplied by 9, and add 5. So the first bit of math we want to do here is we want to multiply negative 2.5 times 9. So let's bring down our negative 17 and a half equals, and when we do that multiplication, we get negative 22.5 and add our 5. Now we want to add negative 22.5 plus 5, and that gets us negative 17.5. It checks. So seeing as this is a true statement, when I plug this ordered pair in for x and y, this is a solution and the student is correct. So yes, the student is correct. The point 9, negative 17.5 is a solution to this equation. So there you have it. That is how we use a table of a function to find the y-intercept, the slope, how we write the equation of the line, and how we determine if a point is a solution to the function. Thanks for joining me today at The Magic of Math where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you come back soon and have a great day.